favor that thou bearest unto thy people, O oh, visit me with thy salvation. <laughs> Every prophetic visitation is ordained for an intervention. You hear me? I see prophets as God's DHL. Do you know what DHL do? They deliver foreign parcel. And I want to let you know that somebody's package will be delivered in this service. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And by my little understanding, DHL is international cross-border. They go everywhere. And I'm glad to let you know it is not by human arrangement that we have God's servant in our midst today. If you underestimate this service, you will lose out. But if you are expectant, something will break forth for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whether you agree or not, I know that today is somebody's day of favor. Amen. You are going to cry out from your heart. Lord, the very word that will open me up to a new wave of favor, to a new dimension of blessing, that will dry tears, terminate affliction, open a door, Lord, release that word for me. Put my own word, make your servant the pen of a ready writer, declaring your counsel concerning me, establishing my settlement, making a way for me, Terminating the roots of affliction. Drying up any secret tears. Lord of atoning captivity. The very word needed for me. The very word needed for someone in this assembly today. Let my own word come by the power of your spirit. Let my own word come by the power of your spirit. This visitation... Is for me. Lord, make a way for me. The word that will settle me today, send my own word. The word that will make a way for me, send my own word. I am expectant of the very word you are packed through your servants. Let my word be delivered. Spirit of God, locate me today. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Let my right word. Let my right word. Let my right word. That will terminate misery. Let my right word. Answer for me. Thank you father. In Jesus mighty name. We have prayed. Your tears will be over today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That long awaited desire will find fulfillment in this service. Make that amen louder. With Jesus' joy in our hearts, let's put our hands together for Jesus as we receive our Father in the States, our state pastor. If you are clapping, clap now. Police no go arrest you. Put those hands together for Jesus. Clap some more, please. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tonight is your night. Yeah. God moves every day. But the day you believe is your day of encounter. God speaks every day. The day you believe is your day of miracle. I'm glad to announce to you tonight that tonight is your day of miracle. Yeah. If often been said that every day is for the thief, but one day is for whom? The devil has been stealing, killing, and destroying. 
John chapter 10 verse 10. For the thief commanded was to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come to give life that you might have it more abundantly. One of the things says that you have life and enjoy it. The devil has been stealing. He has been killing and destroying. But today is your own day. Yeah. If you believe it, let him be the loudest. Yeah. I'd like to start by saying that God ordained this meeting for tonight. I have moved around all the churches in town, but I have not come to refit. I've moved around all the zones in the state, but I've not come to refit. And the Holy Ghost whispered to me on Saturday. I say, ah. It's like I've forgotten refit people. <laughs> but God said, tonight is your night. <laughs> there is no impossible case before God. And there is no case that is too late for God. That's why tonight is your night. <laughs> I'd like to begin by appreciating our beloved, darling, charming, powerful <laughs> Pastor Tony and our wonderful mama and all our powerful pastors, elders and deacons. Wonderful choir. It's like I'm going to transport you to the headquarters. <laughs> Hallelujah. We as I enter this place, I whisper to you and say, this place is too small for you. The next time, I will be coming. I should be seeing you in your new <laughs> auditorium. <laughs> Hallelujah. I may come before them before we move. It, anything can happen. But I see you in your new place. My coming here is to transport, to catapult, to take you up Amen. to the realm where you're supposed to be. Amen. And God will do it. Amen. Special greetings for my wife who is not here now. Praise the Lord. And also, I bring the goodwill of leadership to you. Our father, Bishop Edipo, Bishop Abbe. Leadership is happy with your pastor. And is happy with the work that is going on here. Praise the Lord. And I dearly appreciate the people of Refit for the dogged work they have done from the inception of the church to this moment around. And also the host, the person that have been responsible for the auditorium here, we deeply appreciate you for the great work you have done. You can't host the ark of God and not be blessed. So this is your season of blessing. Yeah. And everyone that have been part and parcel of building this church from foundation till date, tonight is your night of overdose blessing. Yeah. Tonight is your night of overdue blessings. Yeah. After God turn your captivity today, it will be like a dream in the night. Yeah. Every miracle and visitation of God happens suddenly. Now I've come here suddenly. You are receiving a sudden blessing tonight. Yeah. You are receiving a sudden encounter tonight. Yeah. You are receiving a sudden miracle tonight. Yeah. If you believe, let him be the loudest. Yeah. Lift up your voice and let's worship in the King of Kings. I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my Lord and he my disease.
word of deliverance is word of instant miracle you are the Lord that he let me send me your word send me your word the right word the sent word the word in season for my healing for my deliverance tonight I'm set for an encounter I'm set for your healing thank you Jesus in Jesus' precious name, I will pray. Heavenly Father, I had myself behind the cross. All of God and none of me. All of Jesus and none of self. I humble myself before you, Lord, that you will use me as your oracle. Use me as your instrument of healing and deliverance tonight. Lord, honor me with your presence. Honor your people with your presence. Honor this church with your presence. Let there be instant healings instant deliverances, instant miracles, instant salvation. Give us the sent word, the right word, and the word is season that will bring about instant healing and deliverance. Touch my tongue with coals of fire to speak the right word, the sent word, and the word in season to your people. Cause everybody hearing the sound of my voice, let their minds be open. Let their spirit be receptive. Lord, don't condemn us. Let your mercy prevail for us. Heal everyone sick here tonight. Touch everyone that needs to be touched tonight. Deliver the oppressed. Deliver the captive. Let blind eyes be open. Let deaf ears be open. Let the, the lame walk. Let HIV be healed. Let elephantiasis be destroyed. Bone marrow cancer be cured. Breast cancer be cured. Body cancer be cured. Ovarian seas be healed. Fallopian 2 be in healed. In the name of Jesus. 
Barrenness be flushed out. Leukemia be flushed out. Kidney challenge be flushed out. Pains in the waist, pains in the hand, pains in the neck. Be gone! Every form of affliction of the devil from the pit of hell. Return back to sender. Now, as a privileged shepherd over this state, any agent of the devil against this church, any agent of the devil against any member, I destroy them by the power of God. Now, I attack your attackers. I destroy your destroyers. I waste your wasters. I trouble your troublers. I lay to rest. Those that say that you do not have rest. In the name of Jesus. Lord, from this moment, the next one hour, as we are finishing this service, I decree 60 minutes testimonies. 60 minutes cash and carry testimonies. This same hour, as I'm speaking right now, Anyone sick in any area of your body, sick at home, sick in the hospital, related to you, be healed now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. My case is different. Because I'm the redeemer of the Lord, and as a covenant child, what afflict others, is not permitted to afflict. Now, this is how I normally say, what afflict others is not permitted to do what afflict me. We are in the season of oppression. Must pray, go, bring, and I'm not sure. Can we demonstrate it? Oppression must pray, go, bring. I'm a teacher, so we are taught to demonstrate. Praise the Lord. You may please be seated. So that is our season. Tonight is your night of miracle. Tonight is your night of instant testimonies. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6 to 7. That is our covenant verse for this month. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 6 to 7. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Shall we read together? Behold, I will bring it health and cure. And I will cure them and we reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. And I will build them as the first. God will build you. Je Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 19 to 22. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19 to 22. If you are there, shout, my case is different. Behold, the voice of the cry of the of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country, is not the Lord in Zion. Is not her king in her. Why have they provoked me to anger? With their graven images and with strange vanities. Verse 20, let's read together. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. That means we are not healed, we are not delivered. Verse 21, for the heart of the daughter of my people, I am hot. I am black and stonish, has taken hold on me. Verse 22, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the head of the daughter of my people recovered? Tonight, whatever thing that is hurting you, I've come to hurt them. 
Whosoever is hurting you, I have come to hurt the person. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The theme of the month that I've been delivered to us, I give it to us, is I will bring you health and cure. Shall we repeat that after me? Say it loud and clear. Say it loud and clear. What that verse of scripture is saying, God is saying for you, the only thing that is bringing for you is health. But Satan it brings sicknesses and diseases, but me, I have ordained, God swearing by himself to give you health. God swear by himself, I will bring you health. That means I will only load you with health. Not sickness. But in case you are sick, I will bring you what? Cure. The word cure means heal. Satan's duty is to bring sicknesses and diseases. But God's ministry is to bring you health. God wants to take you from a realm of sickness to health and from sickness to wholeness. Sickness simply means a state of recovery from sicknesses and diseases. When you are sick, you need a physician. But when you are heavy, you live camping like Zuma's rock. There's a place called Duseuku here. Duseuku, that is three stones. When you hit a stone, what happened to the stone? The stone cannot crack, but it bounces back on you. So God is saying, you are a lively stone in Zion. You are like Duseuku. You are like Zuma rock. Anyone that shoot arrow against you, return back to Sanda. I want to call Operation Fire for Fire. Christianity is not a gentleman's religion. You must leave the gentle religious mentality to a violent religious mentality. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, it says, the violent, the kingdom of God are somewhere violent and the violent take it by force. It's not by being gentle. Gentility in Christian kingdom is religion. By the teachings of my father, Bishop Wedeko, I want to align this commission. If you try me, kill and go, no mercy. Every enemy of your father's house and your mother's house, I decree within one hour, crash down. Every evil power of your father's house and your mother's house, receive the thunder of the Holy Ghost. Anyone that has placed sickness and disease on you, I have stand as God's representative and I decree be delivered in the name of Jesus. Whosoever has cast spell on you, any divination, return back to sender. In the name of Jesus, as I am speaking right now, be healed, be delivered, be set free. Whosoever said that you will not be married, I command death upon them. Whosoever is holding your womb and say you will not carry child after my dead body, I decree the obituary tonight. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the soil of refit. It will not swallow you. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 1, O earth, O earth, hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah 22 verse 29 says, O earth, O earth, hear the word of my mouth. I speak Speak today to the earth here. Vomit your blessings. Vomit your blessings. Vomit your blessings. I command the swell of refuge in just plateau state here. Every blessing that is due for you within 24 hours return back to you. Every satanic cordra in this area holding down the blessings and the destiny and the blessings and the destiny of the church and the individuals i command turn down upon them in the name of jesus who tell you that power does not pass power who tell you that there's no higher power above lower powers witches and wizards they are a mere spirit you don't run away from which you kill and go no mercy the bible says suffer not a wish to leave so if there is any witch in your father's house or your mother's house that will not repent and confess to you receive thunder of the holy ghost in the name of jesus 
We read a testimony sometimes in the covenant of prayer last month or thereabout where somebody was oppressed. And our Father in the Lord, after the covenant of vengeance, say, whosoever is responsible, let there be fire. So in the night, the, somebody put a charm in the front of the shop of our sister and the leg developer. Papa appeared in the night and put a sack of hot sand on her head. He said, if you don't confess, fire will burn you. She refused to confess. The second day, Papa appeared again. And carry Koboko and begin to beat her. Go and confess. Go and confess. She refused to confess. The third day, that's from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. On the third day, Papa Pierre, again, if you don't go and confess, I will shoot you. He started begging, started begging. The second, third day, Wednesday, she came to confess to the winner's sister. He said, I'm the one that put charm on this. And this will happen. Please forgive me. I didn't know that you have a strong father like this. Anyone that have been doing you tonight, I command fire upon them in the name of Jesus. He says, When you are hot, I am hot. When you are troubled, I am troubled. Do we have mothers here? Every mother, when do you want your sick child to be healed? Now. No mother will say, go and come back tomorrow to heal my child. It's now. So I decree that Jesus is your father. Jesus is your mother. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. He said, when you are hot with sickness and disease, I am hot. That means when you are sick, permit me to say that God is sick. He's feeling the pains that you are going through. He says, cast your bodies upon me for I care it for you. So anything you feel, Jesus feels it. Any load you are carrying, Jesus carries. And the Bible says, he himself took my infirmities. And by his stripes, I've been healed. Now let me give you the picture of that verse of scripture. He himself took. How many farmers do we have here? Oh, we are born in the city. Now if you see old man coming back from the farm, what happens? He carry the load, put on the wife's head, the wife will be going. The, bo the boys and younger people, and the old man will be walking free. Will be walking free, be cutting grass on the road, cut cutlasses, because the wife, he has put the load on the head of the wife. And the children, they have carried the load going home. Our father and the Lord Bishop Deco saw this revelation from the book of Matthew, and see Christ, he himself took my infirmities, and by his strife I have been healed. One to listen, say, by strife I have been healed. Two thousand years ago, you have been healed. So you are not supposed to carry sickness and disease today. He said he saw Jesus brought him out from the farm of sicknesses and diseases, just like the old man that they collected his load, and he walked out free since 1979. From today, no more trace of sickness this way. He himself took my infirmities. Pastor is here. I've taken the Bible from him. Does he have it again? He does have so. So the sickness and disease that is in your body now or you are seeing is a symptom. Jesus nailed them on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. And he said, by my stripes. They gave him 39 stripes. 38 was the discovered diseases and then 39 one was the one that are yet to be discovered. They gave him blood and wah! Typhoid, malaria, gone. They gave another one, wah! Kidney problems, gone. They gave another one, wah! Blood cancer, gone. They gave another one, they gave, wah! HIV, nail. So 38 of the stripes given to Jesus Christ nail and destroy all categories of diseases and sicknesses discovered by a who? World Health Organization. And they gave him the 39th one which is responsible for anyone that they are yet to discover. So Jesus has paid for the past and the, the, the future sickness and disease that the devil wants to put upon you. Come on, say I'm free. I'm free. I am well. I've been delivered. I'm now and forever. He paid with his blood. And you don't pay for any good twice in the shop. If you go to flourish and you pay for provision, you pay for milo, you pay for milk, you pay for sardine, you pay for geisha, you pay for oil. What do you do? Carry gold. No cashier, no security man at the gate. You say, Oga, go back and pay twice. That 
least Jesus paid for your sicknesses and diseases once and for all. You don't have it again. Everything you are seeing is a symptom of the devil. The rising of Christ from the grave and straight to heaven. Jesus crossed every minuses in your life. Now, you see the word cross means crossing the minuses in your life. You see minus, Jesus died, nailed everything and rose up again and went up to heaven and crushed every minuses in your life. So HIV has been crushed. Yeah. Elephant tears is crushed. Yeah. Evil of any kind crushed. Yeah. Barrenness crushed. Yeah. HIV crushed. Yeah. Devils crushed. Yeah. Witches and wizards crushed. Anything that the doctor says you are carrying now has come too late. Because Jesus paid for them 2,000 years ago. So you don't have it again. It's only a symptom. But it takes the wisdom and the knowledge of God in your life to be able to realize your right. The Bible says the healing word is in the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, My son, attend to my word. Not attend to doctors and clinics. Attend to my word. He said, attend to my words. Give attention to my words. So the word of God carry healing virtue, sir. The word of God carry healing balm. Inside the word of God is an emission of the spirit of God and fire. So when you read the word, the healing balm in the word enters into you. He said, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Then why is the head of my daughters not recovered? Tonight, your head shall be recovered. Amen. Tonight, your head shall be recovered. Amen. Attend to my words, incline their ears unto my saying. Do not let them depart from thy eyes. Keep they in the midst of thy heart. For out of your heart are the issues of life. Those that find them, he said, you find them, they shall find, they find mercy and life are being found from the word of God. Inside the word is health. For they are health and life unto those that find them. The word health in the Hebrew language means mercy. So that means the word of God is what? Mercy. The word of God is magani. The word of God is ogun. The word of God is what? Put it in your language. So the word is the principal balm in Gilead. And the pastors are the physician there. I'm privileged to be one of the spiritual physicians in the house tonight. The church is called the Zion. And in Zion, everything, miracle can take place. Tonight is your miracle night. Yeah. Jeremiah 33 and verse 6, the Living Bible translation says, Nevertheless, the time will come when I will heal Jerusalem damages and give her prosperity and peace. I will rebuild the cities of both Judah and Israel and restore their fortunes. I love this translation of scriptures, the tree of life version. He said, indeed, I will bring it health and healing, and I will surely heal them. I will reveal to them the abundance of shalom and truth. I will restore Judah from exile and Israel from exile, and I will rebuke them as in former days. Whatever thing that have been bad in your life, whatever thing that have been lost in your life, Jesus is rebuilding it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, let to him be the loudest. If you believe it, let to him be the loudest. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20 to 22. The New Century Version translation says, And the people say, Harvest time is over. Summer has ended and we have not been saved. Because my people are crushed. I am crushed. I cry louder than I'm afraid of them. Isn't there balm in the land of Gilead? Is there, isn't there a doctor there? So why aren't the hearts of my people healed? Tonight, God is healing you. Amen. Receiving the miracle of instant healings. We have been taught in the first week, second week, third week of how the healing virtues come instantly. I'd like you to know that the difference between the war and the church is the word instant. The major difference between healing in the kingdom and healing in the world is what? The instant nature of the healing in the kingdom of God. For example, Jesus healed the Peter's mother of Thai, I mean, malaria. 
he was healed instantly in Luke chapter 4 verse 39. Jesus also saw the leper and he touched the leper in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 3 and the leper was clean instantly. I love the story of the centurion servant. The centurion servant at the prophetic word of the master came that came from Jesus was made whole that same safe hour. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8 and verse 13. Jesus healed and spoke the centurion servant daughter was healed. Something took place in our church two Sundays ago. 49 instant healing testimonies took place. Including a lady in London that the sister heard the picture during the course of the prophetic prayer. She sent a test where we decided that she was healed all the way from London. That is distant faith healing war. Tonight, any area of your life or your relation in the hospital anywhere, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. We saw Jesus heal and raise back to life the dead son of the widow of Nain. In Luke chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, he touched the coffin and the boy bounced back to life. Whatever thing that is dead in your life today is jacking back to life. What differentiates healing in the kingdom from healing in the world is the instant characteristic healing nature in the kingdom. We saw in Acts chapter 3 verse 16, the Jesus, I mean Peter and John, they were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. And they saw a lame man, according to Bible scholars, he had been there for 40 days. And the man was begging for alms. And Peter and John look at him and say, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The man jacked back to life. And the man began to sing a bube decay in the church. Hey, my Jesus, a bube, a bube, a bube decay. Hey, my Jesus, a bube, a bube, a bube decay. People open man. Is it not this lame man we saw the big decay singing a bube? Jumping. He was jumping and leaping and dancing. The power of the name of Jesus healed the man instantly. Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 to 28, that if anything is in your hand, don't tell your neighbor to go and come back tomorrow, I will give it to you. When it is in thy power to give it to you. We hold not good from any man when it is in your power to give it to you. So Jesus does not withhold healing from any man. He gives it to you instantly. And tonight is your night of instant healing. We also saw from the scriptures in the New Testament that the word immediate appeared how many times? 55 times in the scripture. And every word that appears have to do with healing and deliverance. Wherever they appear, is either healing or deliverance. Immediately, immediately. In the book of Mark chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, we saw Jesus heal the paralytic man. And he said, arise, take up your bed, go back home and be healed. And the Bible said, immediately. The man rose up and took his bed and he went back home be healed. Every form of lameness in your life today. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, now. Come and say, now I'm healed. Now I'm healed. Not tomorrow. Now I'm healed. Time will not permit us to exhaust the teachings on the healing. But... We are asked to focus on the healing power of testimonies. Testimonies are spiritual arrows. We had that testimony read for us of four years of leg cancer healed, praying for the individual on the altar. Four years, had accident. They were to go to India. I said, oh, you should have gone for Shiloh. He said they didn't go. Go to this place, they didn't go. Said, Let's go to the altar. I see altar as the theater. And as we pray, God healed the leg. Four years of leg cancer healed by the power of God. Tonight, whatever thing that is still with you, Jesus will heal you in the name of Jesus. Receiving the power, engaging the power of testimonies for instant healing. Number one, what are testimonies? Testimonies are faith boosters. When you don't appreciate and consider testimonies, one spiritual understanding is short circuited and the petition is crippled. 
A critical look at Mark chapter 6 verse 52 revealed that Jesus was implying that disciples fell into trouble because they did not consider the previous miracles of loaves of bread. So when you stop considering testimonies, you begin to fail as those who do not exalt testimonies never have one. On the other hand, we see how testimonies bring about a multiplication of more of those that had it. So tonight, all the testimony they have been reading to us, we have been hearing in this great church from covenant of prayer being received, it shall be duplicated in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number two, what are testimonies? Testimonies constitute spiritual powerful weapons in confronting the challenges of life. Testimonies constitute very powerful spiritual weapons in confronting the challenges of life. As was the case of David in the battle against Goliath. David engaged the power of testimony in bringing down the head of Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 37, the Bible says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will do what? He will deliver me out of the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. That is divine presence. We saw another testimony in Revelation 12, verse 11. The Bible says, And they overcame me by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Testimonies bring about victory. What are testimonies number three? Testimonies are direct confirmation of the word. Direct confirmation of the word and they went forth and preached everywhere. Mark chapter 6 verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord was with them confirming his word with signs and wonders following. Number four what are testimonies? Testimonies implies Confirmation of the truth. Romans chapter 8 verse 32 says, Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Testimonies are manifestation of the truths of scriptures. They are righteous acts of God and prove that God is still at work on the head today. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So whatever testimony we have read from the Bible we are hearing, tonight is your own. Amen. Therefore, engaging the testimonies of the same we engage scriptures, it's a warfare like the case of David and Goliath. Number five, what are testimonies? Testimonies are living forces with ability to reproduce themselves. They give birth to similar other testimonies and they help to the recipient, that is, those that hear it, preserve. Or those that got the testimony to preserve their testimony. That is, testimonies are for two things. Those that hear it to get their own those that share it, it become perfected in their life. We saw a woman with the issue of blood that her case was healed. And what happened? The whole land of Israel ran to Jesus Christ to touch him, to also get their own testimony. We saw the testimony of the woman in John chapter 4 that had an encounter with Jesus, the Samaritan woman. And what happened? After the encounter, he ran to the town and evangelized. She became the evangelist and many multitudes ran to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. Number six, testimonies are prophetic. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Tonight is your own night of testimony. I say tonight is your own night of testimony. Tonight is your own night of testimony. The testimonies of others you have heard, the testimonies that have been read, is coming to be duplicated in your life today. Yeah. If you believe, let him be the loudest. Yeah. I'd like to share some testimony that will help us to believe God. Power past power. At the service of Tuesday, January 10, 2012, I went to bed and had a dream. I saw myself standing by a wall and charging towards me was a huge goat that wanted to smash me against the wall immediately. As an invisible force lifted me up and the goat smashed itself headlong against the wall and I woke up. Thereafter, I engaged in vengeance prayer against my enemies. The next morning, a woman in my neighborhood came to my house with a long saw on her head and told me that she was the goat that attacked me in my dream. She further said, I didn't know that you are not an ordinary. I am sorry. 
Indeed, divine vengeance is real. Whosoever that appear to you in your dream in form of any animal shall be destroyed by the power of God. If you believe, let him be the loudest. If you believe, let him be the loudest. Very shortly, we'll be partaking in the communion. And we saw, have these instant testimonies concerning communion. Dead raised back to life. On June 30, 2014, my wife was scheduled to deliver our baby through caesarean section. Therefore, hernia repair surgery. The CS was successful, but after the hernia surgery, my wife bleeded uncontrollably to death. I came into the word of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 65, 20 to 22, that my wife will not plan for another to eat, and she will not bid for another to inhabit. I also call on the God of Bishop David Edepo for his intervention. After seven and a half hours, the Zona Pastor of Living Faith Church Austin came with some kingdom amos, mantles, communion, and the bishop picture, which was placed on my wife's hair and placed the mantle on her stomach where she was operated and also anointed every part of her body. They gave me the communion. The wife was there, so they gave the husband the communion on her behalf and say that because my wife and I are one, I will walk on her body as well. Thereafter, we engage in high praise. Lo and behold, my wife, who was dead for seven hours and 30 minutes, jacked back to life in the midst of the praise session. We give God all the glory for all he did for us, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph. Whatever thing that is death in your life today is jacking back to life. <laughs> Cancer humiliated, full blood bone marrow cancer disappeared all the way from India. Some months ago, my husband was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, bone marrow cancer. When we discovered that the equipments for the surgery were not available in Nigeria, we decided to travel to India. While we were there for six months, we connected to the live broadcast of the services from Canaan land. On June 15, 2011, the bishop minister about the ministry of the communion. We had nothing but Fanta and flicks. Notwithstanding, we placed it before the laptop and believed God for divine intervention. Suddenly, as the bishop preached, I saw him walk through the screen of our laptop. So I said to my husband, the blood of Jesus is the white corpus that swallows every other thing. Then I declare, cancer, you have had a general. He has come in here. Let me see how you will follow my husband out of India. The following day, we book our flight. Usually, we pay 200000 weekly for the treatment. But after the encounter on Wednesday, we decided to leave India. When we required for another test to be conducted, the doctors refused because they were all advised to opt for a transplant. When the test was eventually carried out, it was discovered that my loma had been humiliated. And my husband is now free. Praise the Lord. Mrs. Olushoga. We have a testimony of Victoria that the baby was crying could not sleep the baby was crying and they asked her do you give communion he said I don't believe in communion he said serve the child communion and when they serve the child communion the, the baby said I want to poo poo he vomited human hair everything buying and selling your life tonight by the power of the communion you are going to be delivered we have this testimony in our church headquarters. Ten years of affliction turn around via the communion and turn around praise. A strange object expelled from the ear after ten years of affliction via turn around praise and communion. My name is Ruth N. Maina. I joined this commission in June this year, just about two, three months ago. June, July, August. Three months ago, since 2007. I have been experiencing strange noise and ringing of bells in my ear, leading to loss of hearing on my left hand. I went to Jude on Wednesday, 27 June 2017, and the doctor said that I should go and bring 50,000 for surgery. But as a widow, where will I get it from? I did not have such much. So I decided to come to the church and the state headquarters the same day for the communion service, and I asked God to heal me as my only hope. After the service, she would also engage in turnaround praise. I went home, and after taking my bath, I felt a movement in my ear, and a strange black object fell out, and that was the end of the affliction. I can hear clearly now, no more sound on my ear. I also want to testify that the very week I joined this church, which is June this year, I had a very serious accommodation problem, but the God of this commission, who works very sharp, sharp, Bless me with three bedroom flat free of charge to stay. I give God all the glory. Tonight is your own night of testimony. 
shall we rise to our feet. God of miracle has come down. Jesus, the signs and wonders have come down. Let the community will take position as you partake in the communion. We begin to dance. We begin to sing. We begin to praise. We begin to jump. God is here tonight to heal you instantly. Father, by the power of this communion, we decree healings. We decree instant healings. Instant miracles. Instant deliverances. Everything buying and selling in our life be destroyed. I command a restoration of souls. Restoration of life. Restoration of lives, restoration of healings, restoration of health, restoration of life, restoration of marriages, restoration of blessings, restoration of everything stolen in the name of Jesus. By this communion, we decree total healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Let the choir begin to sing the miracle songs of the blood. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. There is miracle in the name of Jesus. There is wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. Kill and go, no mercy. It's injury time. Whatever thing that will not let you go shall be laid down for yourself. <laughs> Two Sundays ago at the state headquarters, we had 440 people that had an encounter on the altar. And 49 people got instant testimonies. Last Sunday, 45 got instant testimonies. Including the person that could not read after three years, another woman could not hear. They spoke to her ears. She had. And somebody was healed all the way from London. You are here in just Koro Koro with your eyes. I decree that your healing be established now. There is what you call financial miracle alert within 60 minutes, within 24 hours. The first place I visited was Busabuji Church. And that place, the, the police officer said he doesn't believe in financial miracle. The dress you wear for the, to the service, you wear to the church, wear it to the office, and remove the mufti and wear police uniform. As he wear police uniform, I went to a dock and came back and removed the police uniform. He wanted to wear his, the, the dress he wear to the church. He saw foreign currency inside the dress. He said, who put the money here? They say, oh God, who will put money inside your dress? God pushed the money there. It was called Riyadh, the Arabian currency. Another woman had been selling second-hand bags. And she went back home after miracle service like this. She opened the bag and saw gold inside. Who put the gold there? And they deposited it. She wanted to sell the gold and they gave her 10000 I went to a church at... Rantia, five people got 60 minute financial blessings. Seven people got 24 hours financial blessing. In our church at headquarters, myself I got. And other pastors got. We have a testimony of one of the reverends, the sister Mary from RCCG. She came for the service from Abuja. She was in the service. She got instant financial miracle alert. Now, two young men were seated in the church at the hour of prayer as we are praying and preaching, talking about financial blessing. Somebody sent text message to him inside church. He said, send me your bank account. As he sent the bank account, before the service closed, he pushed money into the account. It's fast, fast, sharp, sharp financial blessing. I went to our church at Anguado Kuba. Somebody got 100,000. Within one hour. You are that person. Yeah. The last place I visited was Vom. A sister asked another sister, please, I need money for me. See, I don't have money. So during the course of the injury prayer time, cash and carry miracle, the sister in the church, he said, God, remember that my sister favor her with money. She didn't pray for herself. He mentioned the name of that person. And after the service, within one hour, that sister sent a message to the person who wanted to borrow money. He said, God has bought her my bread. Somebody pushing 60000 into account. Up to today, he doesn't know the person. Who did that? Angels of the living God. Let me look at your neighbor. You are the next one. <laughs> hold your purse. If you're a woman, hold your purse. If you're a man, put your hand in your pocket. Now, Pastor, this oil must move around. 
anoint your head, make the mark of the cross, anoint your pocket. If you're a woman, anoint your bag. By every spirit of poverty is caused tonight. I see our sister in the choir is carrying a big bag. That means you want big money. So, whatever your head, make the mark of the cross, anoint your pocket. I decree as the oil is being passed across, every spirit of poverty, every sickness of poverty, because in the name of Jesus, wherever your blessings are tied down, I decree within one hour, within 24 hours, be receiving them in the name of Jesus. That blessing that is due for you, that promotion that is due for you, whosoever is sitting upon it, comes under the Holy Ghost fire. Comes under the Holy Ghost torture. Ruth chapter 3 verse 18. He said, this man shall not rest on the matter he said to today. Any man or woman in your office sitting on your blessing, sitting on your miracle, sitting on your promotion, receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Favor means the cure for labor. I decree for you today a common favor. Now, tonight, as it was given to us, it's called the night of testimonies. We are asked to teach you on testimony, share testimony, so that you can get your own. Because you have come here in this miracle service tonight. As you are going home, financial a lot of blessing. Miracle blessings. Miracle favor. The last place I visited was not Vom, it was Tunduwada, Friday. And I pray, we close the service around 7. And I decree, within one hour, before you get back home, a miracle blessing will meet you on the door. God said, he will start with me first. The pastor was carrying me back home. I said, today is day of prayer and fasting. I want to eat a particular plantain. And as we couldn't get, he said, there's a place there, we went there. He said, they are not selling. I said, let's go to Miango. We went to Miango, they are not selling. And I said, let's go to Flourish. Things are flourishing there. They will still be there. As we are going, the Holy Ghost said, branch to the right. That railway cross about, that's how we turn to the right. That abattoir road. As we turn, we saw two angelic human beings standing. He said, Daddy, you are welcome. Bless you, sir. What are you looking for? The person that carried me was pricing the plantain one to three. I said, I just need few. I, my spirit wants to just eat plantain. Just one to three, four, five. The brother said, Sir, your spiritual father, carry the whole bunch. We say, How much? He said, Don't bother about it. Me and the man selling our salmon, we said to ourselves, I say, Our salmon, Bani Hanoka, Galbarka and Bagiji, Galbarka and Bagiji. I pray for the brother and pray for the man. I carry myself and went. I was the exactly 804. I got the miracle of supplies. Somebody here, this is 715 as we are close. By 815, you will meet miracle blessings at your door. Some of you are here, you don't know what to eat. Before you get back home, you will meet blessings waiting for you. As you sleep tonight, when you wake up, they shall open your door with blessings. As you go to the office, that your boss that hurt you, he will welcome you with a package of money. That your boss that does not like you will welcome you with a promotion letter. Now, cash. Pastor, one more miracle. Remove your shoes. This is miracle ground. I decree for you today. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3, anywhere the sole of your feet shall step upon shall have possession. You are here right now on the miracle ground. Refit, produce blessing. Produce miracle. Produce abundance. Produce promotion. Refit soil, produce abundance. Every door that has been locked against you is forcefully open. As you are going back home, that is how you'll be walking into blessing. Your feet is anointed on the ground. Use your hand and anoint your feet. By that oil and the anointing on your ground, you will not walk into misfortune. You will not walk into evil. You are walking into blessing. Go and possess your possession. Go and return with testimonies. In Jesus' precious name. If you believe, let him be the loudest. If you believe, let him be the loudest. Time will not permit us for the next miracle that I want to administer. I will come back again.
The blows are blessed. I was privileged to stay in Yola for about four years. My father and the faith bishop they both say, be anointing the church and sprinkle the blood of Jesus and tell the members to be anointing their houses and sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Boko Haram could not come. They couldn't come. So this blood of Jesus is called atomic bomb. It's a thunder blast on the head of witches and wizards. When you throw the blood in the air, south, northward, and it's crashed down. Yeah. Now, when I was in Sulajaya, I was operating AK-47. But the demons on the plateau are much. When I came, we upgraded it to AK-48, AK-49, AK-50. <laughs> now, we have to leave AK-50 and go to tracking point. So whatever your enemies are hiding on the hill, on the mountain, you know plateau has a lot of doozy. You track them down. Now, that gunpoint is called track and trash. So wherever your enemies are in the air, on the plateau, on the mountains, on the hill, I track them and trash them in the name of Jesus. I recently went to Bukuru about some Sundays ago for Rao Kanang's 40 years birthday. And when I was talking about tracking point, they said there's another one. I said, what's the name? He said, J something. J... JM, JMT. JMT, that's the latest one. That's the latest gun machine. Pastor, are you sure? <laughs> we'll get it later. But the one we're operating in the headquarters is called Tracking Point. Wherever your enemies are, witches and wizards in the air, in the ground, anywhere, you track them and do what? Trash them. Today, they are trashed and cast in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Don't be angry with me. God is speaking. As aeroplane is going forward and upward from this night, that's how you will be going upward and forward. Today is Wednesday. The next seven days, you'll be flying forward. Going up and going forward. Going up and going forward. Your business going up and going forward. Your family going up are going forward. Aeroplane, when it rises, it go up and begin to go forward. That is how your life will be going up and going forward. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 said, the path of the righteous like a shining light, shining brighter and brighter on the perfect day. Tomorrow will be better than today. Yeah. Next tomorrow will be better than tomorrow. Yeah. Sunday will be better than tomorrow. Yeah. This week that you are seeing is the least week you ever see in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 10 to 11. It says, the Lord your God has multiplied thee 1,000 times more than your size. So next time I see you, you'll be sharing testimony of 1,000 times more than your size. This church, as I step in here, I say, sir, this place is too small for you. You are moving to your 1,000 time capacity auditorium. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Service Yagama. Hallelujah. Right. Sadly, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Congratulations. God bless you.